Uh, welcome to Musik und Frieden Berlin, where I have Karak Angren with me. Uh, let's start with the current uh, rituals amongst the Rotten tour you are on with Rotten Christ. So how has the tour been so far? Yeah, I was just saying it has been awesome. Uh, the tour already looked very good up front. Some shows are sold out and uh, it's a really great package. You can see that some people know one band and are introduced to the other band. So, you know, we have people coming up to us like, we never heard about you, but it's great. And that's always very fulfilling. So it has been awesome. Yeah, looking good. And uh, how important are live gigs for you? Well, very important. It's one of our essential parts, I guess, uh, to express ourselves during a show. I mean, uh, we have great results for our albums, and when people come to our shows, uh, they they say like, "Wow, it's it's like these days, it's almost like sounding like the album," and uh, that's very rewarding. Yeah. yeah, we also have been a visual band from the beginning, and we tell stories. So the the parts to have it live, uh, you make the stories really come live, and so it's really important to really translate it into a live show. Yeah. We bring always new stage props and, and stuff. We have great sound, great light right now. So that makes it really a, a great experience, hopefully, for everyone coming out. Uh, yeah, your music is, uh, can I say, uh, cinematic and vivid. Uh, and so uh, uh, in the future, how large would you like your live uh, to get? How bombastic could it get? Well, there's no limit. I think we'll go to Mars or, uh, you know, something like that. I really like the, the way I see it. I think the way we see it, we just want to make it grow and grow and grow. And um, because we love what we do and we, we see no boundaries, you know, these stories keep inspiring us into the musical realm, but also in the theater realm and lights and all these show elements. So we always come up with new crazy stuff. And we have a great mask maker here, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we I I think of it like a movie sometimes, you know, like the theater thing. It's like uh, it's not just a band that plays their instruments. It's just uh, yeah, it's all, like you say, a whole cinematic theatric thing, and that's great. I don't know where the end is. Like he said, Mars or somewhere, <laughs> cosmic. Yeah. And uh, what are the best and worst parts of? Uh live touring for you guys, for example, now, how is it to tour with uh, uh, Rotting Christ? Well, for me personally, this is a great tour. I mean, we have known the guys from a uh, last tour in the US. We toured together. Unfortunately, there was a tour that Marduk couldn't come. But in the end, we had to make up for that. And it was a great tour. So the guys are really cool. And also the Svartkan, the openers are really great. So this is a really easy tour. And me personally, I, I love touring. So I always like to get out. and. It's great to vary it with periods where you are home and write, but I always can't wait to get out again and meet people and, and do this because, yeah, it's what I burn for, you know. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's a big kick. I mean, all the time when we come off stage, uh, you have first, you have the audience. For us, for us, it's like a big working out also, so we always feel great afterwards. I, I want to do this until the end of my life. <laughs> Okay, and uh, latest album, uh, Dance and Laugh Among the Rotten, came out last year. Uh, what could you tell me about that album? Yeah, it's basically an album that is the, you know, it's the same as what we have been doing. We have been s telling stories about horror. Uh, we feel we developed this over and over again. So we're really proud of this latest album. Me personally, I'm always proud of the latest one because it's the freshest, you know. And... Uh, when we finished it, it was really like, okay, this is really good. There are really cool songs in there, and the press was really uh, raving about it, and fans love it too. So, yeah, maybe sounds cliche, but yeah, really happy about it. And now, finally, being able to present all these new songs is really cool. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, all of your albums have been more or less concept albums. Yeah. And if I'm not completely incorrect, uh, this is about the young girl's fascination with Ouija board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, well, can you uh, go a bit more in depth about the story of this album? Well, the story has some really cool tricks hidden in there. I think not everyone found it, but it has a lot of indiv individual stories. Like it's introduced with this girl playing with the Ouija board and like opening the portal to for all these stories to come through. So it's like a portal to introduce many different stories. 
and the overall cle uh, um, how do you say that in the end you as a listener you find out that it wasn't the Ouija board that enabled the spirits to come through but it was a secret like magic black box and the cool thing is that the album actually comes in a black box so by the time the listener realizes this he's like hey I'm part of the story I also opened the box I'm doomed too so yeah. people who have bought the album and really read the lyrics you know have this cool extra thing and that's what we like to have almost like four dimensions not just the music and the story but for me personally i really like to make the listener part of it somehow and i'm always thinking about this so uh -huh. yeah, yeah we, we have some uh yeah the different stories in there two special ones like one of uh, charles francis coglin it's a story about also about a coffin so we we like to get that in because this was also about a box and uh, the story is about someone an actor who dies on stage and uh, he gets buried and uh, after a, a hurricane his coffin gets washed out and it takes seven years for the coffin to to float like 2,000 miles almost to his birthplace as if his spirit wanted to come back home in a way you know so uh, yeah and we have like one tale about uh, a devil and a witch so they're all a little bit connected for us it's important to have a very yeah smart smart stories with a with a good clue and a plot in there so uh and it's going to be as well for the next album too yeah so uh where does this uh, fascination of uh, stories and legends come from and uh how do you in the in the end how do you choose well i think both of us we have been fascinated by creepy stuff horror from when we were children uh -huh. and that has been an ongoing thing to so to have karagangran as an outlet for this is like survival <laughs> so we are really always inspired we sometimes sit down just talking about stories or books we have read or movies we've seen or we just fantasize about things and that's like an ongoing thing it probably will never end and uh, and i mean it is fascinating sometimes to read what people have been scared of you know many many years ago or even nowadays uh, some people are really rational you know they want to understand everything we are rational too, but it's it's fascinating. People can be scared of spirits or things that don't seem easy explainable, you know. And uh, that's an ongoing thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, we we search for the fears in people, the the the, the fears that make the nightmares come true, and that we try to work in our lyrics. Yeah, uh, but it's the main theme is for us more like ghosts and demonic uh, demonic things. Yeah, and also, you know, people are scared of these things, but they're also fascinated. It's like a horror movie. It's horrible to watch. You sometimes hear people, oh, I wish I didn't go, but it, it keeps drawing you in, you know. You never get tired of it. And I have sometimes seen movies, I'm like, I wish I hadn't watched that. But it still, you know, keeps you going. It's not boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, if I'm correct, uh, Karak Angren uh, started out in 2003 as a side project of, for you guys. Mm -hmm. So, uh, till, for example, today in Berlin, uh, how would you sum up the band's journey? How have you evolved? Yeah, the, the funny thing is that we started out as a, as a side project because we were in the same band in another band, but that band, you know, was really cool, but started to dissolve. And the three of us really have uh, our own identity. So we are very different and we respect that. And that makes us like a machine that has been working and working. For example, Sarah is very theatric, he makes really great masks, writes lyrics, and it's like an actor on stage. And the guys give me the, you know, the, the room to write most of the stuff, so that's really cool. And my brother, Namtar, he's like the mechanical guy, he's the drummer, and he comes up with really great stuff that we can use on stage. So, and, you know, respecting that, we have been going on, growing, growing, and, you know, uh, looking into this area of storytelling, horror stories, and... Uh, I'm really proud how far we have come, and like we said before, there's a long way ahead of us. Nothing more to add. <laughs> okay, uh, basically, uh, your style of music, you know, if we get down to it, it's a uh, uh, symphonic black metal, I, I guess. So, uh, what does black metal mean to you guys? Black metal, yeah, it changed already. We we, we like to call it these days more like horror metal because. Yeah, black metal is maybe something from the older days, from the Scandinavian side. So, 
Yeah, but still, for me personally, black metal, it, it stays in there. I mean, the, the, the blast beat, the horror, the ex extremities, uh, the corpse paint, these are still basic things from that scene, you know. And so we never really began with the black metal scene. We, we were in the later waves, you know, and uh, the melodic, uh, the symphonic bands is what inspired us. And then we got back to the, to the more true bands. Then we started to listen to the older uh, black metal bands. So... So for me personally, uh, it's very important that, that that darkness stays in there for black metal. Yeah. But still, we cannot yeah. call our band a black metal band these days anymore because there's too much influences of other kinds of music. Yeah, if you would analyze it as dead metal, trash metal, you could go on and on and on. And also these days you have so much bands, so many bands, and the internet makes it accessible. It's not like the old days when you had three, four obscure magazines and you would discover some bands, which was really cool, by the way. But, and also the black metal movement was also a cultural thing, I think, especially in Scandinavia. And we are so different from that. But what Sarah was saying, it's like the darkness we incorporate into these horror stories. That is something that we really you know, cherish and uh, protect and uh, find very important. Yeah. But we also go overboard. We have some really cool stuff. Uh, you know, it's not like... Um, you see some bands that, you know, they look really dark and obscure and we are more on the other end. We really are theatric and we act it out more. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, for the last question, uh, one about my favorite album, Death Came Through a Ghost Ship. So, uh, uh, can you tell me uh, something interesting about that album or making, about, making of it uh, that nobody else knows yet? Maybe. Which one was that again? Oh yeah, yeah, the, this is a really cool story. We went to the sea because I had this image of us standing in front of the sea for the album cover. Yeah. But it was in Holland, it was really cold that day, like freezing and there was a lot of wind. So we had to stand still, especially uh, Sergor, like, we had to stand still like this. And it was like, okay, one, two, three, shoot. And then it was like, oh, you know, <laughs> we were really freezing. and. Uh, so the, re the image is really great. The photographer really did a great job. But we know <laughs> how hard it was that day. And <laughs> this is like a returning subject also when making the video clip last year for Charles Francis Coglin took like more than two months to prepare everything and digging holes and being in water and it was freezing. So we like to go really crazy with this. So yeah. Yeah, but for that last video clip, you were the one who suffered the most, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we had this uh, this room filled with uh, with water that has to, had to look like rain, and he was playing his keyboards, and he had this cold water ray in his neck, and he was literally I, I heard his voice like changing. He, he he literally got into problems, so we had to quit it, warm him up, use warm water hoses to to keep him uh, warm. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I like this about this band. We go really far. We go really uh, almost until heart failure here sometimes. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much, guys, and all the best for the rest of the tour. Thank you. Thanks a lot.